I am Peggy Gator Gal, and this is my object sona, Penti. The reason why I'm not using my main sona, Peggy, my Splatoon sona, Haru, or my cookie sona, Gummy Rat Cookie, is because I want to talk about Nanam Insanity Season 3. Or more specifically, the character arc of the contestant, Silver Spoon, from Episode 1 to Episode 13, as I think he has the most clear and possibly overlooked character arc when it comes to other characters, like Bot. And warning, spoilers ahead. And this will definitely be outdated as soon as episode 14 drops. So first off, what is Inanimate Insanity? Inanimate Insanity is an object show, a show about sentient objects, competing in an elimination style game show for the grand prize of a million dollars. Kinda like uh, Survivor? Or Total Drama Island. It's also the second oldest object show to exist on YouTube. Now that that's been clarified, what is a character arc? A character arc is a journey of a character's growth or development as they change from one type of person as a response to what goes on in their story. There are three types of character arcs, a positive, a flat, and a negative. The positive arc is basically where a character changes for the better. Think Ebenezer Scrooge and how he went from a selfish, greedy, money-hungry geezer to a kind of more friendly, charitable person. A flat arc is where a character doesn't develop at all. Um, take Eeyore, for example. And lastly, a negative arc is where character changes for the worse. Think the Joker or Taco. I might make a video about her. No promises, though. Anyways, for Silver Spoon, his character arc is a mixture of a positive and flat arc. I'm going to break it down and explain it by the three-act structure. Also, while writing the script, I realized that this is going to be way too long to put into one video, so I'm splitting it up into three. In Season 3, Episode 1, we first meet Silver Spoon via a botched introduction of the new contestants by MePhone 4. We immediately get a hint as to what his personality is. Why, I never! This introduction was simply a disaster! Ah, he's British! Silver Spoon's entire personality is based upon the phrase, born with a silver spoon, which means someone who was born into wealth or higher society. There are many examples of this being the case. The first of which being his self-centered and rudeness to others. Savagely hurling myself off of a pile of dirt? Oh my, this is unpleasant. Ooh, you should try not to talk so much, my dear. You'll sound far less stupid that way. Yes, I agree with Groundy. Flory. Beneath me. He is especially rude to one person in particular, but we will get into that later, as that is important. He's also idolent, silver-tongued, and shrewd. Goodness, more work? I was just starting to enjoy myself here. Nicely done. An updated file on good manners. And for you, some fascinating infographics I acquired from me phone directly. Who do you think Handel and Ying Ying were talking about voting for? Hmm? The floor? Probably not. He's likable. Gets a lot of votes. My, I hope we're safe. There are no downsides to Silver Spoon leaving. He's lazy, slippery, and probably rich already. Despite his behavior, he's actually afraid of how people see him and is self-critical. Ooh, me phone! Next time, warn us before you hire photographers. Where are the sinkers? Is it safe for me to show my face again? Silver Spoon, prime target. More scared of a bad picture than anyone. A camera gone? How did we miss that? Oh, they must be right here. I'm not polished. I, I can't get my picture taken today. I can't. I think I'll have a silver spoon. No, I already hate the pictures I take of myself. The thought of anyone else taking my pictures. Oh, the worst. He's also able to think strategically and act under pressure. You heard the floor. We must remain ever vigilant. Notice any spooks, anyone? Just as scared as you said he'd be. Stop it! Come any closer, and I'll shoot! No, you won't. I've read your file. You don't have it in you. You may have files, Cabby, but you never know what someone will do under pressure! But his biggest and most important trait is that he is prone to jealousy. Remember when I said that he was especially rude towards one person? Yeah, that's because he's jealous of her. This calm, mellow, meditating girl is Candle. She's sweet, soft-spoken, spiritual, but is sarcastic and literal at times. 
This is who Silver Spoon is jealous of. I have no faith in you, though. You should try not to talk so much, my dear. You'll sound far less stupid that way. No, I don't know why she got those printed either. They just love her. Are flying in her own little world. Of course, knows exactly what to do and say without trying at all. I've had enough. How is it you always know all the answers, hmm? Energy, mumbo jumbo. Oh, heavens, candle! Your inner flame. It's on the outside. Oh, look out! Dude! Ah! Hmm. I've attracted my statement. There is a witch creature living among us with a magical inner flame place that, thank you, dear, that could give her any answer. Not that I'd ever use such a cheap getaway. I'm not jealous. In fact, season three, episode four, is the episode where things take a turning point for him. This episode is about his team, the Thinkers, having to pick a contestant to vote off. Thinkers, you are up for elimination. This is when Silver Spoon starts trying to persuade his teammates to vote a certain way. Because he obtained information from Cabby. And for you, some fascinating infographics I acquired from MePhone directly. If you think that's sweet, I have power to share in the way of viewer vote information. Who do you think Handel and Ying Ying were talking about voting for? Hmm? The floor? Probably not. He's likable. It's a lot of votes. My, I hope we're safe. They consider options by discussing it at the picnic's table, like it's a council meeting. They consider voting off the floor, and then Yin Yang, before his jealousy over Candle takes over, and he discusses voting her off. There is a witch creature living among us. It gets to the point where he gets called out about it. We're not eliminating Candle. She's the best one at keeping us together. Unlike... While the group discusses voting Silver off, Yang starts to have a temper tantrum over Yin, to the point where he says that he wants to vote Yin off. After which, Silver's jealousy gets to the point where he wants Candle to show him how she gets her secrets. That's it! You are bringing me to your magical secret telling fireplace! Right away! Candle leads Silver to the top of the volcano, aka the Red Spot, and tells him that this is where she gets her guidance. She tells him to look in. He's nervous, and as he slowly leans forward, he is caught off guard by what Candle says. Do you see how to eliminate me yet? He panics and almost dies. Candle saves him, and then asks, So, um, why me? So we cut over to Yin Yang going feral with soda cans, and then we cut back to our two dangling for their lives, and we get this wonderful scene. Did anyone ask you to come here and discover an easy way to eliminate me? Well, they didn't say they didn't want me to. It's not about you. It's not about me. And now, it'll be about neither of us. If I'm dying, you dying with me! Ain't no choice! We cut back to Yin Yang going apeshit, OJ arguing with paintbrush, and the floor starting an earthquake. We then cut back to our silver boy, and the Candle Queen, and we get this dramatic scene. I'm sorry, okay? I knew what I was doing was wrong, and I did it anyway. You could do anything, right, Candle? Use your magic! <laughs> the cut to black is so- Oh my god! No, stop! I want to see what happened! So anyways, we cut to black and oh my gosh, this girl can fly! You can fly, you can fly, you can fly! The captain is called that voice the inner flame and not candle? So is that a different person or um, never mind, it's not important. Back to Silver Spoon. So after Candle saves Silver Spoon, she tells him that all he needs to do is oh, come on! Well, whatever the inner flame told him. He's definitely putting his silver tongue to good use. Get your head out of the gutter! Sounds like he was quite the handful. Perhaps it's best we deal with him tonight before he causes any more mayhem. So Yin Yang finally gets to hit the damn button, Daigarampa style, and we're taken to the elimination area. Poor Mephone is blind all because of the amount of times he had chemicals spread on his face to get it all shiny because these fools took too long. 
Poor Yin Yang feels like shit for making me phone legally blind. Then we get this. The viewers voted too, and we'll save one of you. Tonight's immunity goes to... Yin Yang. What? Any votes cast for Yin Yang won't count. The smugness on this mofo's face. We saw the chart earlier. Now we know what that huge black chunk is for. Keep in mind, these were past viewer votes, and this is the first time their team ever been put up for elimination, so they would have no way of knowing what that means. Plus, Silver accidentally showed it for a second, and they didn't even notice. Anyways, back to the team votes. First vote, Yin Yang does not count. Yin Yang does not count. Yin Yang also does oh, not no, Yin -Yang, count. Oh no, Yin Yang, don't cry. OJ, that's one vote for OJ. Paintbrush, that's one vote OJ, one vote Paintbrush, one vote left. And the fourth eliminated contestant, OJ, leaving inanimate insanity for the first time ever. Damn! Damn! Yep, OJ never got eliminated once in season one and was never cast in season two as a competitor. Why am I not surprised he got voted off? OJ, you already won a season. <laughs> he what? You didn't know? Even I did, and half the time I live under a rock. Where do you think he thought it came from? And with that, OJ humbly accepts his defeat and- Oh, it actually worked! Gabby's file on fire votes gave me everything I could ever need on voter habits to be secure, and Yin Yang getting the votes once again. Okay, enough, Silver! And then, since Candle insisted we vote for OJ due to his disconnected form of leadership, and I knew you would all be too scared to do that, I pushed you all to vote for Yin Yang, because who wouldn't? The former king of anatomy and insanity, Dethrone! Silver's phone! <sighs> That's enough. Okay? I expected a bit more applause, team. It was for all of you. Candle, I listened to the lava. Just because it was his time to go, it does not mean it was your time to speak. Okay, as someone who is on the spectrum, I can tell you that this scene definitely reminds me of things I've done and experienced before. Reacting positively at an inappropriate time? Check. Won't drop a subject when told to stop? Check. Saying something without thinking about how it would make others feel? Check. Not picking up on social cues, like facial expressions? Check. Going too much into detail about something? Check. Not understanding why people are reacting the way they are? Check. And being calmly told that they went too far? Check. Now I'm not saying Silver Spoon is on the spectrum. I'm just saying that there is something more than just his ego here. Back in episode 3, we found out that Silver Spoon is self-critical and fears how others see him. Hell. Episode 4 shows us more of this. These moments lead me to believe that Silver is just using his ego as a shield to hide how he truly feels. And we see that this is more the case as we go on. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. After Silver Spoon is yelled at by Paintbrush and is commonly disciplined by Candle, OJ still accepts his defeat, and Paintbrush checks in on how everyone is feeling after what Silver did. Candle seems to be chill, but is worried about Silver. She even glances over at him. And look at him, standing all grumpy in the background. I thought you were Silver Spoon, not Shadow the Hedgehog. Jokes aside, this is another thing that leads me to believe that he is socially awkward. Upset when things don't go the way you wanted? Check. Distancing themselves when upset? Check. Glaring at others and keeping a watch over their surroundings? Check. After Paintbrush checks in with Candle, they declare that the thinkers don't need a leader. And we get my favorite Yin Yang line. We destroyed the government! Candle suggests a group cheer, and the final group cheer together with OJ, and... Even after I... thank you, I'm... Thinking they ruin their friendship with others, check. Surprised when people around them accept them, check. So they do the group cheer, and OJ is punched into the sky. So what have we learned about Silver Soon in this first act? We learn that Silver Spoon is true to his name, a bit of a stuck-up brat. We learn that he is prone to jealousy and is self-critical. We learn that Silver Spoon is strategic and able to act under pressure. So what is it that he needs to change? As shown in episode 4, he needs to learn to be nicer to Candle. If he doesn't, he will fall with her and will be out of the game. How will he grow from this experience? We'll just have to save for the next episode. 
This is Penty the Pentacle, and I'll see you later, Pegagators.